In this example, we have a function L of s equals to 50 divided by s times s plus 2 times s plus 10. We are looking for the crossover frequency, the phase, and the gain margins for this function. Let's start by writing this function as a function of j omega. By replacing s with j omega, we have L of j omega, which is 50 divided by j omega times j omega plus 2 times j omega plus 10. The first step is to find the crossover frequency of L of s. The crossover frequency is defined as the frequency for which the gain is 0 decibels or the magnitude of the transfer function is 1. To find the crossover frequency, it is then sufficient to find the magnitude of this transfer function and equate that to 1. The magnitude of this transfer function is 50 divided by the magnitude of omega when omega is omega c. The crossover frequency is simply omega c or real part square which is 0 plus the imaginary part square omega square square root of that sum is omega c times now the magnitude of this pole which is omega c squared plus 4 and times the magnitude of that other pole which is going to be omega c squared plus 100 real part squared imaginary part squared and this is equal to 1. We can now multiply the denominator by 1 and take the square of both sides of the equation to eliminate these two square roots. We are left with 2500 equals to omega c squared times omega c squared plus 4, omega c squared plus 100. We ended up with a 60 order equation here. This is very complicated to solve. We can simply use a, calc a calculator or a MATLAB to solve for this, or some sort of uh, dark magic. Or we can equate omega c squared to, say, a. And I'll rewrite this expression as 2500 equals to a times a plus 4 times a plus 100, which is now a third order equation, which is a lot more manageable. If you solve for a, then take the square root of a here to find omega c. And omega c in this case is 1.82 radians per second. At this particular frequency, the magnitude of the transfer function is 1, and this characterizes the crossover frequency. On the Bode plot, at this frequency, that this is the frequency where the Bode plot, the gain on the Bode plot, crosses 0 decibels. So this is the first step towards finding the phase margin. Now let's write it here, omega c, the crossover frequency is 1.82 radians per second. And now calculate the phase margin. All right, now that the crossover frequency is known, we can evaluate the phase of the transfer function at the crossover frequency and see how far we are from 180 degrees. That difference is the phase margin. So what is the phase of L of s? The phase is defined as a sum of the angle of all zeros. We have no zeros, hence phase of L0 is 0, we have phase for that again, which is also 0, and we have three poles. The phase of the pole at the origin is negative 90 degrees. The phase of the pole at 2 here is a 10 of imaginary part, which is omega, divided by real part 2. And the phase of the other pole is inverse tangent of the imaginary part, omega divided by 10. All right, sum of phase of all zeros, 0, minus the sum of phases of all poles. And this one here is 0 because it's, it lies on the uh, imaginary axis, on the positive imaginary axis, but because it's a pole, it's negative 90 degrees. Now we can evaluate the phase of the transfer function when we are exactly at the crossover frequency of 1.2 radians per second, as we determined before. And to do that is very simple. Now just replace omega c in omega here. We have negative 90 minus a10 of 1.82 divided by 2 minus a10 of 1.82 divided by 10. And this gives the phase at negative 142 degrees. So at the crossover frequency, 
the magnitude the transfer function is zero the phase is negative 142 degrees this is the phase of the transfer function at this particular frequency it's not the phase margin the phase margin we can define as 180 degrees minus the magnitude of the phase at the crossover frequency so the phase margin is basically how far we are from the uh, 180 degree mark and notice here the negative of the absolute value of the phase so in this case the phase margin is 180 minus the magnitude of negative 142 which is 38 degrees what does this mean it means that the system as it stands right now is closed loop stable how can we tell well obviously we need to add 38 degrees to the current phase without actually changing the magnitude in order to reach that critical point of 1 and 180 degrees of phase or the negative one point on the Nyquist plot anything that exceeds that value will now make the closed loop system unstable the Nyquist plot will encircle negative one at least once and the system will now become closed loop unstable Right, because you see here we have no unstable open loop poles so if now the phase margin turns out to be a negative number this means that now we are encircling negative one and the system is closed loop unstable to calculate the gain margin first we need to determine the frequency at which the phase reaches negative 180 degrees having the phase then we can go to the gain and see how far the gain is from zero decibels on or from a magnitude of one to do that we need to expand this equation now if you look at this equation and write this expand the denominator we have 50 divided by j omega in the denominator here we have j omega times j omega this is negative omega squared and you should have plus 12 j omega plus 20 we can further expand this now multiplying out this j omega from here we have 50 divided by negative omega to the power of 3 times j minus 12 omega square plus 20 j omega all right j omega times j omega is negative j omega square j times j is negative 1 now from this transfer function it is easy to identify the real and imaginary part of the denominator the real part is negative 12 omega squared and the imaginary part is plus j times what we get we have 20 omega minus omega to the power of 3 now we need to find a way to eliminate the imaginary part from the denominator this is relatively easy we can simply multiply the function by the complex conjugate of the denominator both the numerator and the denominator so this will be multiplied by 12 omega squared minus j times 20 omega minus omega squared to the power of 3 divided by the same thing of course so we maintain the same function we can now expand the top and the bottom of this equation and you see that when you multiply this 50 with these two terms we can now identify the real and imaginary part so the real part will be 50 divided by negative 12 omega squared divided by now we have here a plus b times a minus b so this is a squared which is negative 12 omega squared squared minus b squared and b squared is b is j times 20 omega minus omega to the power of 3 all squared right? a squared minus b squared so a is negative 12 omega squared b is j times this part so this is the real part and the imaginary part is negative j times 20 omega minus omega to the power of 3 divided by the same denominator negative 12 omega squared squared minus j times 20 
minus omega to the power of 3, all square. So here we have the real part of the function, and here we have the imaginary part of the function, and now that I wrote it, I forgot to multiply this part by 50, right, from right here. Very well, now that I have the real and the imaginary components, we know that at negative 180 degrees, the imaginary part is zero. Why? Because at negative 180 degrees, we are sitting on the negative real axis. The magnitude of the transfer function sits there, which means that the imaginary part is zero. So if you now take the imaginary part and equate that to zero, and solve for the frequency, that frequency is the frequency that makes the phase negative 180 degrees. Having that frequency will allow us to determine the gain of the transfer function at that same frequency and then the uh, gain margin of the transfer function. So if you now take the imaginary part here, which is simply negative 20 omega minus omega to the power of 3 divided by this entire denominator here, let me call this entire denominator c, constant c, so multiply this by c, divide this by c, times 50, so c is the entire denominator, this is equal to 0. We are setting the imaginary part to 0. What does that give? We have two pos possible solutions. The first solution is, of course, omega equals to 0. This is not a valid Frequency, a frequency of zero simply doesn't exist. And the second possible solution is 20 omega minus omega to the power of 3 equals to zero. Well, this is 20 equals to omega squared. Omega is square root of 20, which is 4.47 radians per second. Let's call this frequency f, uh, omega f or wf, which is the frequency that it makes the phase negative 180 degrees. This makes the imaginary part, the transfer function, zero. The last step in this exercise is now to find the gain margin. We have the frequency of 4.47 radians per second. At that specific frequency, the phase is negative 180 degrees. It is now sufficient to evaluate the magnitude of the transfer function at this particular frequency and see how far we are from zero decibels. The magnitude of the transfer function is 50 divided by omega times the square root of omega squared plus 4 times the square root of omega squared plus 10. We can now simply replace omega with the frequency we determined, 4.47 radians per second, and this will give a magnitude of 0 0.208 for the transfer function. We see that the magnitude of the transfer function is less than 1. This is good news. It means that the system is closed loop stable. If this magnitude was greater than 1, then it would be now to the left of negative 1 on the Nyquist plot, and the system would be closed loop unstable. With a magnitude of 0 0.2, if you plot the Nyquist plot at negative 180 degrees, which is the negative real axis, we would be somewhere around here to the right of negative 1, meaning that the Nyquist plot would not yet encircle negative 1. So this gain indicates that the system is closed loop unstable. We can also uh, say that because you see that here we have no unstable open loop pulse. We can now define the gain margin as negative 20 log of that, 0 0.0208. Don't forget the negative sign here. The negative sign is important because this negative sign will now give us a positive value for the gain margin, meaning that we can increase the gain of the transfer function by a certain amount before this becomes 1 and before this point moves towards negative 1 and encircles negative 1, making the closed loop system unstable. So the gain margin here is 13 decibels. This means that we can increase the magnitude of the transfer function by 13 decibels 
without changing the frequency and the system would still be closed loop stable. How do we get a gain of 1 here? A gain of 1 and a gain margin of 0. We would have to divide this by 0 0.208. Right? If you divide this by 0 0.208, which is the same as dividing this here by 0 0.208, dividing that by 0 0.208, so the gain that we can add to the transfer function is 1 over 0 0.208. We can increase this gain of 50 by multiplying the transfer function by this value, and the system would still be closed-loop stable. Past that amount, now the Nyquist plot will encircle negative 1, the system will be closed-loop unstable. At negative 180 degrees of phase, the magnitude of the transfer function becomes zero decibels or one and the system is said to be closed loop unstable.